you make it and we shoot it home. Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flutter Mouse. We have another unusual aerodynamic shape we're going to test out. This one has kind of internal fins on it. A lot of people think that might stabilize the slug. We'll give that a test. Now these were made by Evan Perry. He's the guy that made the commutator slugs. You probably remember those. Uh, also slugs made out of knobs and all kinds of other weird things. Evan's had a pretty good success rate and a lot of his weird designs have actually worked pretty well. So let's get out there and see how these things function. All right, all right Talf Leader folks, we're gonna try something different here. This was sent in by one of the viewers. Uh, Jeff wants to call him a holy roller. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of holy, but uh, these are uh, short sections of some type of a roller. It's aluminum, and they're sleeved with a bonded rubber. They look interesting. We're going to see what they'll do downrange. I think they'll need rifling, though. They're well, just a cylinder. Yeah, we're going to shoot them through a full rifle barrel, uh, 12 yards. We'll see what they'll do to a block of wood if we can hit it. <laughs> 12 yards. We've got a little shade going on today. Woohoo! We finally got smart. <laughs> if. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right. There we go. We're going for center mass. Well, 14.54 feet per second. <laughs> you hit center mass. Now you may say that plastic wadding is fused to that slug, and you'd be correct. But we have a happy accident here that uh, plastic wad assembly actually stabilized the slug and allowed it to fly straight and true and accurate. Hey, it was accurate. I was amazed. Well, that was interesting. Sure. We'll see on the slow mo how straight it hit, but it bounced back at us here about it's all full of wood. Five feet. It's packed full of wood. Backside's packed full of wadding. Ah, okay. So maybe a, uh, a shot card or something underneath there. I don't know. I didn't think they'd need it. Got it pretty good. Yeah. It just shows you how much force there is on those things when you fire them, you know? I don't know if it'll show that up close, but way down inside there. Wow. Packed full of plastic. Okay. It, it's accurate, though, despite everything that happened, you know? Yeah. Okay, holy roller part two. <clears throat> Higher velocity than I thought they'd be. Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. I'm ready. <laughs> are you ready? He hit it. 1606. Once again, the plastic wad stayed attached and acted like a stabilizer, and it was pretty darn accurate. This was at 12 yards. We usually do these tests at 10 yards. We've had slugs that were so unstable that they would completely miss the target and hit the legs of the table. So this is pretty good, actually. All right, that was uh, a little bit to the left. Point aim was here, but I might have pushed a little bit. But man, that took a chunk out of that gel. You can almost through this uh, ballistic booger, you can almost see the wound channel. Oh yeah. And then we got an exit. Not bad. Nice fresh block of booger. <laughs> got a booger on my finger. <laughs> Gallon jug of water. Dispatch that nicely. Again, very accurate. He was aiming at the label, hit the label. These things have the accuracy of a factory slug. I mean, that's the crazy part. We've shot factory ammo that was less accurate than these, actually. Okay, we got a Star Trek Wars X-Wing TIE Fighter. Um, <laughs> just because, just because. Like he's trying to pull up. We better use. Get you gotta have to use the force, there, Danny. Stay on target. I'm ready. Stay on target. 
<laughs> they got R2. Finally, we see what happens when the projectile releases out of the shot cup of the wad, and it's not very stable. A little bit of wobble there, but luckily Danny uses Jedi mind powers to keep it on course and still clip the wing of that toy. Okay, if we don't do the lead block, people will uh, be very, very upset. We got the gel for them, now we go for the lead. Yeah, the, the ballistic booger, everyone loves the ballistic booger, and the lead plate. Okay, let's see if we can hit it. I'm not gonna stick this one on my finger. No, okay, I'm ready. A little bit to the right. Well, once again, the projectile releases from the shot cup, but it kind of looks like like when I throw a football, it doesn't fly uh, with a really good spiral. And if you look close, you can see some of the plastic still stuck in the base of the projectile, probably causing it to be a little bit imbalanced. Kind of hit a little bit to the right from where I was aiming, but still not too bad. Uh, bounced back there about maybe seven or eight feet, but it did hit a little bit wonky. Yeah. It actually extruded some of the lead up, or compressed, or however you want to call it, up inside one of the holes. Oh, okay. But that's how it hit. Hey, but hitting is half the battle. I think part of it is our wadding is hanging on, because this one's stuffed. Yeah, yeah, I didn't expect that to happen. I should have supported it better. Gives you an idea, again, how much force is being slammed to the back of that thing. Yeah, but the concept is good. Yeah. Okay, let's see how they do against Ballistic Doug. Last one? Last one. Okay, I think you can hit him. Try for a clean spot just above that tear. Okay, I'm ready. Yikes. Messed up his shirt. Bruised his pick. Yeah. But, uh, crazy how the wad's sticking up here. Yeah, yeah. And then we've got, here we go. Oh, it like almost hit backwards or something. Look how it's, it's almost stuck to that dang thing. Yeah, it's because the wadding got shoved up inside there. Did not, I thought we'd have good support there. Dang it. Well, there you go. Holy roller, baby. Still accurate enough to hit everything we're aiming at. Made a hole big enough for a panky. Yeah, yeah. Through a ballistic vest. Almost went through the Kevlar. That was a fresh spot too, I think. All right, in the last shot, the plastic wads decided to stay attached to the projectile. And because of that unintended stabilization from that plastic wad, it was fairly accurate. This was definitely a very interesting test. A lot of surprises and unexpected results. And it just goes to show you that you could still have a winning design even when you have the little happy accidents occurring with unintended results. We want to thank our generous Tal Patreon supporters. We reluctantly asked for viewer support and these folks stepped right up and gave it to us. I can't thank you guys enough. Trying to be a full-time video creator on YouTube has become very difficult and without these folks we would have given up a long time ago. Thank you again. All right, we have a little uh, sneak preview for you. Um, after we posted the video of the Gyrojet uh, rocket guns, a lot of people wanted to know if it was possible using modern technology to make a like a 12 gauge rocket slug. So we had a lot of suggestions, a lot of people wondering that. And as things go, a lot of people talk and few people do things. Luckily we had one viewer who actually made these slugs for us and we'll be testing them very soon.
So be sure to stay tuned for that. It should be entertaining at the least.